Chapter 1 A Secret and Favor Bring the school bell rings, and my best friend Lily and Jasmine and I make a mad di- dash for the playground. It's recess, our favorite time of the day. Obviously, we hit the blacktop and run straight to hide out our top secret hiding spot under the slide. It's the best place for telling secrets because it keeps all Snoopy Snoops like Gabby Gurps and Control Rider out. Today, Lily has a huge secret. I can tell because she's always twirls her hair around her finger when she's hiding something and she's being twirling her hair all day long. Spill, Lily, I say as soon while we're in safe inside the hideout. Let's make extra sure that the coast is clear first, Lily says. So Jasmine double checks the entirety to make sure con- Carl and Gabby aren't spying on us. You can never be too careful when it comes to those two girls. They want to know everything about everyone. All clear, Jasmine calls. Okay, Lily begins. You may already guess. I have a secret to tell and also have a favor to ask. That sounds like a double dog secret. I think scooching closer to her side. I And I am double dog interested. First, the secret. Lily says, pauses to build a suspense. Then she spells, I going to cruise. And we all squeal at the same time. My whole family is going. Lily continues and there's no going to be a pool, a water slide, a movie theater, a dance party every night. Wow, Jasmine exclaims, that will be awesome. Lily claps her hands, exactly, and cheers a whole week of awesome. Then Lily takes a diff- deep breath and looks at Jasmine, and with total puppy dog eyes, but but now I have to ask you a favor, she says. Can one of you take care of my bunny, cutie pie, while I'm away? Jasmine already shaked her head. I better not, she said. I'm not good with rabbits, and rabbits are not good with me. One time, wild rabbits ate my entire vegetable garden. They're sneaky little critters. Then Lonely turns to me, and I already know my answer. I would love to take a cutie pie, I say, but I have to ask my mom first. The three of the wiggles out of the hideout to go find my mom who happens to be a teacher at my school, which is pretty handy. Obvious my mom is in her classroom, so I ask if I can take care of Goodbye for a whole week. Mom closes her book slowly and asks, Do you think you can handle it, Daisy? I hibbity hop up and down, like a rabbit says, I know, I can handle it. Then my mom says, Yes. Lily, Jasmine are all hopping and down because I get to be an official bunny babysitter. Gaboing, gaboing, gaboing.
Chapter Two, Rabbit Rules. Ding dong! I peek out my bedroom window, and it's them. I gallop down the stairs like a wild racehorse, and all the way to the front door. Lily Dow, Dad, holds a huge cage in his arms. Inside the cage, I can see fluffy white bunny with a cotton ball tail. No wonder his name is Cutie Pie. He is so cute. I invite Lily and her dad and Cutie Pie inside. That then I sneak peek at the cage and see Cutie Pie sniff, sniff, sniffing with his cute little noise. Lily's dad carries everything to my bedroom. Lily and I hop up the stairs. One by one, then scamper down the hall after him. Then we get to my room. Lily tells me how to take care for her bunny. She even gives me a list of rabbit rules, which we can go over together. The rules of rabbit ownership by Lily. Hay feeder should always be full. Replace water every day. Provide a few, a few fresh greens daily, like broccoli, cabbage, celery, leaves, dandelions, or kale. Serve one tablespoon of rabbit pills each day. Clean water litter. Litter and add fresh little as needed. Little rabbit roam outside the cage daily. Watch out carefully. Cuddle and pet. Play with your rabbit. Rabbits love to play. Provide cardboard for your rabbit to chew on. Wow! I think rabbits are a lot of work. And Lily realizes she forgot Cutie's pie snacks and toys in the car. I'll go get them, she says, and sprints out of my room. And now it's time to introduce myself to Cutie Pie. Hello, little bunny. Cutie Pie watches me with p- his pink, gem-like eyes. Do you want to have fun with me this week? I ask. He twitches his pink nose and says. I always want to have fun with you, Daisy. Whoa! I jumped back from the cage. I like I got zapped by electricity. Did Cutie Pie just talk to me? I asked myself. Of course not. Rabbits can't talk. So then I look around my room, and surprise, surprise! Guess who is standing right behind me? Posy, my imaginary friend, I should have known. Obviously, sneeze attack. Who is that? Posy asks, peering over my shoulder. He watches Cutie Pie scamper into the tunnel. That is Cutie Pie, the bunny. I say, I'm talking. Care. Taking care of him while Lily's on vacation, Posy races toward the cage in a close look. Then his face squinches like a mighty squeeze. That sounds like a lot of fun. His face relaxes again. My. May I introduce myself? Sure. I tell him, "What harm can it do?" Posy presses his face against the cage. Hello, Cutie Pie. My name is P. 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 Then Posy erupts like a goopy volcano. A chew. A mist of glitter goops straight from his mouth. And nose and showers all over my room. Whoa, my imaginary friend! 
has glitter burgers. I, I want to scream ew and wow at the same time. Sorry, Posey says as the glitter goes splatters everywhere in my room. He scrunches his n nose again. At his time, I dunk at you. Posey zooms backwards and flies through the door to the world of make-believe which he left. Open a few moments that he peeks back inside my room. Bless you, I say, even th though I kind of want to say gr say gross because my book is what I am supposed to do about all the shiny mess. Posey's nose is still twitching like his might sneeze again. I said, I was sorry, he tells me as the next sneeze. Thankfully, he passes, then Posey trolls back to my room. I sigh, well, at least you didn't glitter blast, kitty pie, I say. Then I turn around in the cage when I do double take the cage blown wide open, Posey sneeze must watch un unlunched it. I check all the hiding spots in the cage, but it is totally empty. I've been bunny sitting for five minutes and I've already lost Lily's bunny. Oh no, I cry. We have to find Cutie Pie. Lily will be back any minute. She'll never go on her vacation if she finds out her bunny's missing. Posey and I search my room, upside down and inside out. We looked under my bed, behind the desk, and between the curtains. But Cutie Pie is absolutely nowhere. Well, at last, I'm not sneezing anymore, Posey says, rubbing his nose. And all I can do is roll my eyes, and that's it, of course. When I see Cutie Pie hop right by us, stopped, I shouted, laughing for the bunny, but I'm not fast enough. Boing, 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 Cutie Pie hops right into the room. Chapter 4, The Marshmallow Forest after that bunny, I shouted running through the magic door. When I look over my shoulder, Posey is walking in slow mo motion. Like his whole thing is no big whoop, but it is a big whoop. It is a giant big whoop because I'm responsible for Lily's bunny. Then I sneak little hopper hops in the path ahead of us. Oh, thank goodness. Come here, you big cutie. I call after him and it's ti teeny tiny second. I think I might just be the easiest bunny rescue mission ever, but then, achoo! Posey sneezes another gigantic say no nab that rabbit cutie pie hops away into the forest. I stare in the, the trees and I for Posey. He hops beside me. I sniff his knots. I think I might be allergic to you, your friends, he says. Obviously, I think. It's marshmallow forest, I think. That doesn't sound scary. Trees to see if they're loaded with marshmallows, but I can't see any from here. I shake my head and say, it doesn't matter what kind of forest this is. I have to find Cutie Pie. Lily will never speak to me again. Posey frowns. He's very nervous. Why don't you just find Lily a new pet? He sends it. The posy stoops down and picks a swirly purple and white rock. I bet 
she would love a pet that never runs away, like a pet rock. He holds the rock out in front of me. I push it away. Have you got rock in your head? I asked finally, Lily, a new pet would be like me saying, I should just find an imaginary friend. Posey's eyebrows shoot straight up. I can't tell he does not want to me to find an imaginary friend. Okay, okay. He says, let's find that bunny. Then he runs into the marshmallow forest. I hurry up after him. And that noise, he's still holding the rock. Posey, are you going to keep that rock as a pet? Asked my imaginary friend. Looks lovely at the rock, she says, and I'm going to name her Shelly. Chapter 5 I sniff the air. The marshmallow's floor smells amazing, like honey, vanilla, and maple syrup. At the same time, where that smell coming from? I act dreamily. Posey, who is glued to the side, he looks up at me. The trees, he says. Then I walk up to a tree and look at its leafy branches. And what makes the place so dangerous, I asked. Posey repeats his answer. The trees, honestly, the trees. I don't look dangerous to me. So I reach out, touch one of my fingers. I spring backwards. Does it feel like regular tree it feels like i just touched a person that's weird i think then a shadow darts across the treetops and posy leaps into my arms what was that he yells into my ear i feel in time too loudly i too regain my balance but posy won't lose his grip on me it was probably just a squirrel, I say. Thought that I have to admit it. I have the strangest feeling we're being watched. Finally, Posey lets go of me and slides back to the ground. Okay, I say, trying not to let, let his yummy smelling force distract me. Let's make a plan. To find cutie pie, we go thinking mode. Posey taps the side of his head with the finger of his finger, and I squeeze my chin. I wonder what smells good to rabbit. I say. Posey stops tapping his head and snaps his finger. I know. He says carrot. Then he digs in the bottomless pockets and pulls two out carrots that are big orange. He carries a lot of random stuff in there. What one? He asks, holding a carrot in my direction. I take it and begin to walk while holding the carrot carrots out in front of us. Here, bunny, 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 we call, came out a crunchy orange here, and we wait for it to answer the call again. This time somebody answered it, but it is not cute by Oh! Somebody answered, it's not cute by Oh, I wonder, love a carrot. I would, said the voice from Pirates. Posey jumps into my arms again at the same time. A branch from the tree above reaches down and plucks the carrot right out my hand, out of my hand. Posey screams, jumps out of my arms and springs away. I freeze, stare at the tree, my, my carrot. And right before my eyes, a friend forms on the tree trunk. Oh my gosh! 
I think these trees are alive, and they like carrots, and they can talk. Then I wonder how they can cutie pie. Posy, I shout, come back, we need more carrots. Chapter 6, On the Right Track. I would like to thank you for this crunchy treat. I would say this tree standing in front of me. Then the whole tree blends over and bows. Hmm, would you happen to have another carrot? You would ask tree to my left. This is a mind bogging link. Are all the trees here alive, I wonder? Then Posey taps me on the arm. He's back with a basket full of carrots. I have some more, he says, offering the basket to me. I take it and thank him. Anytime, Posey says. And by the way, I was only pretending to be afraid of the trees before. I wink at my friend because we both know he's a total chicken. Then the trees help themselves to carrots. Om nom 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 nom. They crunch munch happily. Felks of carrot fly their mouths and it's it's a little bit gross obviously. Then Posey clears his throat. Then wants the tree's attention. He's feeling much more comfortable around them. Now, since we've given you a treat, Hosey begins, would you please help us with something in return? The tree chops, munching to listen where we are wondering. Hosey goes on, if you, you've seen a white bunny pass through the forest today, he's fluffy, he's fast, he makes a very sneezy. The tree looks at one another and shrug their branches. Then their face of the one in front of me lights up. I know something that's quite fluffy and fast. I would, he says. Then the tree restates his branches, fluffy white marshmallows. Right now, on the spongly ping pong balls. I stretch my head because I, even though I love marshmallows, I'm confused. How's that marshmallow could be fat? I ask, but before they have time to enter a whole new crop of marshmallow, they form the tree's branches. I say, your marshmallows. Grow super fast, but there's only one a little problem. We're not looking for fast growing marshmallows. The trees stare us blankly, then explain how Cutie Pie is a rabbit. But I'm not sure they understand. The trees, after all, in their their world worlds, maybe bunnies are called yo birds instead of giving me an answer. They Want a different question. You must be hungry. You would, they say. You would have a marshmallow, you, you would. Hmm, come to think of it, Posey and I are a little bit hungry. So we accept their offer. I'm going to pick some marshmallows and pop them in her mouth. And yummy, yummy, tummy, yum, tum. These marshmallows are so light, so fluffy. Oh, so marshmallowy, wowy. Wow, obviously. I stuff my face until my cheeks pop out. Then I get back right to work. I'm pausing, buddy. Machine is my mouth full, so the letter S sounds like, like, so. How can you help you find 
a rough bunny? I asked. We what? The trees turn, then the forest flows with the tips of their branches. Just follow the footprints. You were so posy and look ground in between the marshmallows. And we spy might be bunny tracks. But how can we sure they're Peter Pike's tracks? I asked. Posy dropped to his knees the footprints. And before you can say it, dust bunnies, he supposed sneeze a chew. That settles it. These are definitely cutie pie's tracks. Let's nab the bunnies, I shout. Chapter 7. Things get he hair e. I've learned a few things about bunnies today. Number one, bunnies do not hop in a straight line, or at least Cutie Pie does it. His bunny tracks are very curvy like a spaghetti, or else they go in circles. I'm pretty sure they have passed the same marshmallow tree five times at least. Number two, bunnies can hop far. Every time we turn a corner, and I think I'm going to see Cutie Pie's fluffy tail and floppy ears. Let's just find more bunny tracks. Let's put everything endless. Then Posey yelps loudly and points to something off the distance. I look in that direction, and over there, a hill. And far away, something looks like bunny. It could be Cutie Pie. I ask myself to. It has to be. Let's go. I cry feeling a new burst of energy. But Posey has stopped to draw a bubble around his head with a pen. World of make-believe are you drawing, I asked. Posey opens a part of bubble covering his face. It's an astronaut helmet. He says, now I can help rescue Cutie Pie without sneezing or scaring him away. I hold up my hand and high five because this is very good Posey idea. Then Posey leaps in, into the air like a space guy and he floats away after Cutie Pie. is talking a high road I I decide to take low road but first I pick up Rosie's pen which she left behind and I put it in my pocket for safekeeping then I drop to the ground and crawl on my belly like a lizard I don't want to scare her silly rabbit away either slowly slowly I creep on cutie pies when I get close enough, I reach out my arms and wrap around the bunny in the great big hug. Gotcha, I cry looking down at Cutie Pie. Only, it's not Cutie Pie, it's a, even a rabbit. Well, that's not completely true. It's a creature that seems like a rabbit. On top of its head, it literally has a hair on his head. A hair. And get the creature head. Get it? Hair head. And this creature is not alone. There's a whole bunch of these bunnies. Is it looking creatures? They're hiding and they're all glaring at me. These not bunnies are happy with me. Let go of my hair, cried the squirmy creature, still wrapped in my arms. Let, let, I let the creature go free. He brushes himself off the rest of the friends. The ugly, I apologize. Oh my, I'm sorry. I thought you were a bunny. A bunny I'm looking for. Try to explain the capture sold me. Well, you should be sorry, he says. You run a very good hiding place. I I look at 
the creatures and staring at me everything please but P I'm not sure what you mean I was just looking for my friend's bunny maybe you've seen him then the creatures all began to talk at once bunny they questioned what bunny I'm begging you to think bunnies or maybe exist one well, but the trees hadn't heard them either. The creatures snapped back attention. There's no time to talk. One of the creatures warned at the air taken is coming. Posy floats Posy floats down from the sky and lands in front of me. Where's Kitty Pie? he asked. Then I shook my hand in disbelief. Because seriously, read the room, dude. I'm surrounded by little creatures are in major tizzy. Finally, Posey noticed something wrong. It takes closer look at the creatures. Hey, these are not rabbits. They're decorated. They're hot toppers. So what's them called, I think? They're hot toppers. Run this way. Something I'm not sure what then Posey covers his mouth with his hand. You be hiding, he asked the hop toppers. Then the voice dropped to whisper. What about Trigon? The very word, the very word Trigon. He sets the hot toppers off again. They cry, squeal, and scurry the way. That one of the hot toppers complained about me to Posey. Well, your friend gave away hiding spot, he says. And now we have to find another one. Posey turns to me and shakes his head gravely. He hiding spots in front of two hot toppers. Trigon is always chasing them. I throw my hands up in the air. How am I supposed to know that? Posey asks his trigon as soon as the dark shadow spreads. Till there's no sun. There's no more sky. I heard on um, Posey, I whisper. Does trigon believe have blue scales and wings, pointy teeth and yellow eyes as Spiky black like a dragon. Posey nods like crazy. She does. How do you know? He asks her so prince. In fact, she is the dragon, which means also brief fight. The deaf nightly need to be on the lookout. I point behind Posey and cry. In that case, look out. Tracking up. I thought Cutie Pie was fast, but Hot, hot Topper split faster than a banana. Banana at an ice cream shop. Roar. Trigon roars the roarest roar I have ever heard. Even marshmallow trees pull up roads in a way I could butter cups with the dragon finally. No wonder hot toppers need to hide. I look for somewhere to hide too, but know that trees was all gone. Pos Posey and I are left standing in the middle of the bear field. There's nothing between us and Trigon, and she's getting closer by a second. Posey and I whispered, we need to draw a door back in the real world right now. It's our only way out. Posey takes off his special space helmet and reaches into his pockets, looking for his pen. He pulls out the watermelon rubber snake, her fortune cookie left, leftover marshmallow on the floor lap. He musters pockets and his new rock shelly. Then he places shelly on his hand 
and I thank them for games. Posey, I cry. Where's your pen? Posey crinkles on his finger. Oh, no, I lost it. And that's I remember he didn't lose the pen. I have it. Roar! Tiger rolls again. It's snake, snake shakes beneath us. I quickly, I quickly shoved my hand into his pocket and pulled out a pen. But it's too late. Trigon is standing right over, and I'm pretty sure we're about to get eaten or burned to crisp. Cr crisp. Then I got out of the corner of my eye. I spy Cutie Pie climbing up Posey's back. There you are, I shouted. Who cares? We're total goners. Is what happens when you babysit your best friend's bunny. Suddenly, Lily's fluffy little Cutie Pie's nudge Shelly rock the right off top. Pose hands and rock tips straight on Trigon. Shelly! Shelly, Pose screams. Trigon catches the rock and eats claws. Just as I lunge for Cutie Pie, because I know what happens when Posey's near Cutie Pie. But I'm not fast enough. I chew! Glob the glitter of snot spray everywhere. Trigon and Shelly gets the worst of it. Dragon squints her eyes and shakes her head to get rid of the goo. Gooey sparkle slime. And then, for a brief moment, whoom, scrap for crackle noise. Crickle, crack, crickle. Uh-oh, something's happening to Shelly. Looks like she's coming apart. Then I really like Shelly's not a rock. She's an egg. She must be Triangle's dragon <laughs> egg. And she's hatching. Princess pieces of shell drop to the ground. They are Triangle's arms. And the world's cutest baby dragon, Trigon, sighs and looks thankfully when she spreads her enormous wings, flies away with her baby. Posey and I eat at each other. Our mouths hang up open. Well, that's not something you see every day, po Posey says. Even the world makes make-believe. My secret is safe. I have to go home, I said, hanging the pen back to Posey. He draws the door to the real water. I better say, he says, sniffing and posing, pointing at Cutie Pie. I give my imaginary friend a huge air hug so he doesn't sneeze. Then I step back into the real world, just really burst through my bedroom door. I turn the tiny dragon over my hand. Wow, it looks so much, Dragon. It makes my wonder the cute pie, cutie pie. No, where is the going today? Maybe I wanted to see her dragon. I watched Lily snuggle her face in her bunny fur. I'm going to miss you so much, cutie pie, she whispers, and I can't tell she means it. Thanks again, Daisy, she says, handing Cutie Pie back to me. She looks around a glitter tastic room, and I hold my breath. This is no game over. Lily's going to know something it up. But interesting, she asks, hey, did you redecorate your room? It looks brighter. No, I say it with a good girl. Thank Cutie Pie brain to up th the place. Lily nods and then she gives me a cute by a big head for us racing back to the car. When she's gone, I hold cutie pie up to my face and I know you're just fluffy bunny who loves dragons and doesn't talk 
Could you please promise to never, never ever tell Lily about what happened today? Then guess what? Their hair brain bunny told Winks at me and I sighed a great relief because I know my secret is safe with the cutie pie. Check out Daisy Dreamer's next adventure. Wow, look, you look beachy cool, Daisy Dreamer. I say to me and Mira, I am wearing my favorite bathing suit. It has colorful striped spaghetti straps, but not spaghetti, obviously. Why am I dressed in a bathing suit? Because 